We are happy to announce the launch of our new logo. We have evolved since our incorporation in 1997 and it is time to refresh our new look to reflect who we are today. Before I reveal our new look, however, walk with me while I take you through our journey of the last 25 years. Trust Bank was incorporated on July 3rd, 1997 and began operations on October 1st, 1997. Following the collapse of the parent company of its predecessor, Meridian, the CBG stepped in and recapitalized the bank and held the shares in trust, thus the name Trust Bank. In 1999, the first investors who responded to the IPO and paid $1.50 per share received their maiden dividend of 50 bututs per share. In 2000, the bank fully paid back its investment by declaring another dividend of $1.20 per share, making it a cumulative dividend per share of $1.70, which was 20 bututs above the purchase price. Between 2002 to date, share capital has increased from $27 million to $200 million, indicating that the bank has grown organically by plowing back profits to increase capital, while at the same time paying dividends to shareholders. The bank was listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange in November 2002, being the first ever cross-border listing in the sub-region. Now let's talk about awards. The bank was awarded the insignia of the National Order of the Republic of the Gambia, ORG, in the year 2010 by His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia. During the past years, the bank has received so many national and international awards. Banker Magazine, six times. Global Finance, six times. Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, five times. We began operations with three branches. Now, we have 18 branches and 20 ATMs and counting. On digital services, mobile app, check. Online banking, check. Transaction alerts, check. Watch this space, we've got more coming. Creating employment, yes, we've got that too. 400 and counting. And we take great care of our people too. Medical insurance, life insurance, private and state pensions, annual pilgrimages for both Muslims and Christians, training, yes, we do them all. One team, one family, one goal. That's the trust bank spirit. On corporate social responsibility, we have spent over $50 million in various courses. We care, and so we share. Over the years, we have paid over $1.6 billion to our shareholders, which translates to a whopping $20 per share and counting. Phenomenal returns for our shareholders who purchased at $1.50. Corporate taxes, over $1 billion is paid. Our journey started with a vision to create the kind of company that delivers quality services and innovative products with an inspired team dedicated to serving our customers, our environment, and our communities at large in the most caring manner. We remain fully committed to delivering excellent services to each of our stakeholders, customers, employees, shareholders, and partners. So, we remain true to who we have always been. As we look forward to greater achievements, we are rebranding to reflect who we are today and the future that we inspire. Our new logo has been designed to visually demonstrate our Gambian heritage and the sophisticated nature of the bank. We are moving away from the navy and gold-colored parallelogram-shaped logo to our baobab tree with a rising sun in the background. The striking outline of a baobab tree at sunrise is a familiar sight to anyone who has spent time in the Gambia. Our new logo and visual identity are inspired by our core values and spirit of being a pioneer in providing a unique banking experience. It is a completely new look that better matches the transformation we have made as a company. But we remain your trust bank. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor to present to you our new logo and corporate identity. For the 
first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Biliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non size restricted printing service supply across the sub region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today, and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable, and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. On the reason I have always called for a national dialogue is because a government must be responsive to the needs of its people. Fatu. Tell me one thing, if I'm me as drink. an individual, if I know that there is somebody that I definitely wrong, yeah. I will be bold enough, I will go to the party, I will appeal to him and apologize him. decision today because I don't make decisions lightly. I investigate. I do my research. I get the facts. I call the experts. I, I summon meetings. I get the technician. Then I reflect and I make a decision. Why did you lose the election? Well, we lost the election because of treatment and registration. We had evidence of people being registered before the opening of the registration. Hello, it's another Thursday and of course we are back in the studios here in Tranquil, uh, another Kelfa to show. Today with me I have Honorable Momoru Zabali, former Secretary General, uh, Head of Civil Service, who is also uh, now the campaign chairman, campaign manager of the United Democratic Party. Uh, Zabali, welcome to the program once again. Thank you. It's been a while. And greetings to your very interesting and loyal audience. And how are you doing? Very well. Alhamdulillah. I can't complain. Okay. Happy, fired up, 
ready to continue to roll on. Okay, great. Yes. Now, first, before we get to uh, Sabali, we want to, first I want to say, if you're watching, if you're watching and you're grateful of Kirfato, let's see the stars rolling, because huh? uh, I always see Nene telling people, <laughs> but just to let you know, if you send us stars, you are directly supporting the network and it, it turns out to be money. And, and that is that and other revenue is what we use to help uh, develop programs, this one on other programs for us to be able to sustain our operations. So to all of you watching, send us stars. And somebody of the fans are stars. Kiyanko <laughs> 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 <laughs>
we convey our condo condolences to the bereaved families yeah. and to the uh, entire security fraternity. Yeah. And we pray for the souls of the, the young men who passed away that Allah admits them in Jannah. Amen. Amen. And of course, we also want to give an update on the TikTok of Mankajang, uh, Mankajang Daily. Uh, Mankajang Daily, uh, I think uh, yesterday we got information that he went to Jululung. Uh, Mankajang was the gentleman who interviewed Mama, the la lady who allegedly, uh, you know, caught um, Useno, the, mm -hmm. the suspect mm -hmm. in the shooting. And Mankajang interviewed her. I think he went further to go to Jululung yesterday. I, I don't know exactly what he got there, but uh, I think upon posting on his TikTok that he was in Jululung, he was called for questioning. Yesterday we updated on our page. We were not able to bring any other updates as to what his whereabout is. But just before coming to this program, I saw on Watson Gambia, and I want to give credit to Watson Gambia for this because I think they were, the, uh, I think they, apart from, um, Apart from 360, uh, I saw 360 also, but I want to quote Watson Gambia saying that he is now held at the anti-crime unit. Since yesterday he was um, called for questioning. Um, we don't know exactly what he was called for. Um, I, I don't know what the, pro and I, at some point I said on my Facebook page, is getting worried. I mean, I know we are journalists. I don't know if Manka Yang is a journalist, but I know he's a TikToker. He did interview Mama, and he went further to get some other information. Um, should the police notify us if whether we should interview or not interview people based on investigations, or is it because he's not a journalist? I don't know. But when you heard of Manka Yang being uh, questioned, what was the first reaction? I was concerned, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, naturally so. Uh, I'm friends with everybody in this country, especially yeah. media, media mm -hmm. personnel. Mankabang is uh, a little brother of mine, and yeah. I know he's a, a good gentleman, mm -hmm. good citizen, who is playing his role in, the, in, in media work. Mm -hmm. So when I heard uh, that he was uh, being called for questioning, questioning. I was concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, I became further concerned during the day today when there was scanty information exactly about his whereabouts and, and Fatu, i think this is unnecessary drama the gambia police force mm -hmm. should do their jobs professionally according to law we know what happened in this country with the killing of these uh, security services it's a concern for everybody yeah and to the credit of gambians across ethnic and political lines everybody showed solidarity with the gambia police force yeah but from then on, the kind of moves and missteps and uh, misinformation and uh, conflicting information coming from the side of government has not helped the situation. Mm -hmm. And I think it is our correct collective responsibility to these fallen men to make sure that we all play our roles diligently. The security has a role, yeah. which is different from the media, which is also different from some of us who are consuming this as uh, civilians. I believe the Gambia police force has the responsibility to take the lead role mm -hmm. and to create uh, corridors of dialogue and consultation mm -hmm. with uh, all stakeholders because the media is a stakeholder. Yeah. So if, like you said, the police feel that certain people should not be interviewed, mm -hmm. I think they should come forward. It, it doesn't have to be a press release. Give us our guidelines, me. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Call a few, or, or call the Gambia Press Union. Yeah. We are doing our work. These things happen even in, even in the developed Western world. Yeah. When certain information is sensitive to national security, mm -hmm. you protect it, but you don't do it by force or threatening people. That the case of Mankajang is particularly worrisome. Because if you want to call Mankajang for questioning, mm -hmm. who is saying you should not do it? Not me. Yeah. I'm not saying you are. I'm not say, I'm, I don't think you are saying no. that Mankajang should. But if he's called, yeah. by state authority mm -hmm. they got to give information to the public especially his whereabouts he has friends he has colleagues he has family i mean i i think this is really worrisome and i want to put my concern on the record that the gambia police force they should improve on how they do their job yeah yeah i i i i, I was equally concerned because we are people who we are um, we are members of the media we would the police will do the investigation but we also want to know how the story is unfold. We want to know. Kerfatu spoke to the, uh, to, to, uh, to the alleged shooter's um, brother the day after the incident because we wanted to know 
where what's the mindset of the family what happened who this guy is and we did that it was not because we people wanted to tamper with the police investigations but the media will also have a role uh, to be accountable to society you would want to tell them all the things that maybe the police would not na naturally would want them to know so these things happen but if you really think um there should be guidance and everything is like you said you there know. should be a dialogue yeah. between but, but the police I, I just want to say that yeah. it, there is a level of dysfunctionality at the office of the police pro right now i think a couple of months back yeah. there it was easier to get information from the police mm -hmm. i don't know it looks like there are some change of personnel i saw somebody being yeah. promoted and of course if you are new in the job sometimes yeah. but the, of all times right now it is fundamentally important that the police equip that office and to make sure that you, the journalists especially, have access to that office. Yeah. It will make life easy for both the police and the media. Yeah. And also, before we come to yours also, mm. you know, recently, uh, when this incident also happened, the mm. first person to react to it was the government spokesperson, Ibrahim Sankare. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, I know Sankare was briefed because, you know, Sankare would not come out and say anything <laughs> without just being told, this is it. Um, and, you know, a lot of us, including myself, said, whoa, 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 Sankare, this is, you know, mm -hmm. because some of the things that were said there, they were debunked by BAC and, and the family. And the police came out two days ago to say, actually, they're taking responsibility they were the one that gave Sankare <laughs> that information how do you think that will affect the entire investigation going forward well I think like I said when this incident happened mm -hmm. everybody was in solidarity yeah with the Gambia police force and mm -hmm. the entire security fraternity I think my party UDP was one of the first yes. to come out and openly condemn the act and uh, show solidarity with the police and uh, we on social media we saw practically everybody mm -hmm. was but when Sankara rushed into the fray said certain things and people could link ulterior motives to some of the things he said people started raising questions you know when some of these uh, allegations started coming that the suspect was working at Brikama area council naturally the, the uh, citizens allied with that particular office and that particular side of the political divide started being suspicious, started raising questions. You know, people started questioning Sankare, started questioning the police. I don't think that that, that is useful to the police's process of uh, trying to establish uh, those who committed this crime so that justice could be served and served on time. So it, it, it's very unfortunate what happened, uh, really, and I think for me it's unnecessary drama. Uh, I think the police, they need to take control of this process because everybody has their role. Government spokesperson has his role. This is a police matter affecting the police. I, in my opinion, I think Sankara should have just left this thing with the police for information to come. Because at the time he was speaking, uh, as far as I know, police were just at the beginning of yeah. their investigation. Yeah. They've not, and these things, I'm not a police officer, but I think... I know that at some point, by the time you start stuff, some of the information you have, you would need to corroborate. Maybe some of the information you may need to even question yourself if you are an independent professional investigator. So, I mean, I think some mistakes have been made, missteps have been made that has affected public confidence. And uh, the point for me is for the relevant authorities to learn lessons, but they should not squander the the social capital if i may call it that the police have gathered from this very unfortunate incident i think again since uh, they're still arresting people they need to communicate with the media so that people don't start uh, uh developing yeah speculating and uh, before you know it conspiracy theories that's already on anyway yeah so it doesn't help anybody and uh, and i think the focus for all of us should be on the families of uh the, the gentleman we lost yeah. and the lady who's uh, still trying to uh, recuperate. And I think if we put that foremost, mm -hmm. we would gather, the, the police would gather more, more cooperation from the public. Now, last Friday yourself, mm -hmm. you were invited for questioning. Yeah. Tell us about it. How did it happen? They called you or they came to arrest you? How did it go? Well, uh, of course, I, this country is very small. I had intel mm -hmm. that the police wanted to call uh, arrest me with intent to link me to the alleged uh, murder of this uh, you you had that intel way I before, had intel before two days before they, they called me in. okay 
you know, and I'm not surprised because it would not be the first time that an incident would happen and the police would try to link me with it. In December, they did the same thing, alleged coup attempt, and then uh, Mobutu Sawali made a statement days before that alleged coup attempt. But because the police and the N some of the NPP stalwarts who were so desperate to silence me to make sure that I don't continue to hold this government accountable, between these two institutions, I was brought in for questioning. They tried everything. They failed to connect me. This time again, they came in. They called me on Friday. Yeah. You know, and uh, told me they wanted to have me at Kairawa Police Station. I said, for what? They said, a statement you wrote on Facebook. I said, okay. So they said, it's very important that we have this uh, interaction. As usual, I went to Kairaba Station and met the team from the SIU. Most of the faces were the same faces who were there during my interrogation regarding the alleged coup attempt. Mm -hmm. You know, so they put in a statement uh, before me that I shared on Facebook where I said that the P PIU, some elements of the PIU, are targeting members of the opposition UDP. And I said in that statement that they will pay the price. So they wanted me to explain because they thought I said that. And then a couple of days later, this happened. This happened, And uh, they actually said that, you know, it was a similar thing during the December arrest as well. So I told them, well, I write on Facebook. I have an audience. And that audience, they know that Momodou Savali is not a violent man. Law abiding will never, ever advocate violence or taking the law into your own hands. I said, I am doing advocacy because the, some elements in the paramilitary unit targeted and brutalized my supporters when my nomination was rejected for National Assembly election. The videos are still there on social media. Nothing was done out of it. When I was arrested in December, again, for the alleged coup and targeted to deliberately try to link me to it, they detained me beyond the legal limit. My wife came in, my lawyer and my supporters, with placards on their knees, paramilitary again, tear gas them. Nothing came out of it. This particular incident, which actually, it was Yankuba Dabo's court case, mm -hmm. when the UD, some UDP members wanted to go to show solidarity. And I decided not to go because mm -hmm. I know that I am the number one target of this government. So I decided to stay away, and for other reasons, because... My presence in a political cloud, crowd can uh, actually generate a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. And I knew the paramilitary coming into contact with a group of UDP supporters, most likely there might be an incident. So I, I, I refused to go. And I called my sister, Ramu Sabali, who is a nominated councillor, yeah. become a Kid area council. I told her, well, uh, you have to go and show solidarity with Yankuba. You are a nominated councillor. He's going to court. I said, but... I gave her my advice. I don't need to go into details mm -hmm. because I suspected she might also be a target because she was in NPP, decided to come to UDP, and she became one of the most formidable forces to gather support for UDP. And, and the Enoram was instrumental in Yankuba Dabo's victory. So I know they are not happy with her. So I gave her all my advice. They went. I didn't go. Even before the court case started going on, I got information that she was uh, targeted, gassed, and brutalized. I was really angry like for a state that has targeted me from the beginning, from 2017, denied me my rights, banned me unconstitutionally, denied me my rights for my constituents to decide whether they want me to represent them or not, targeted my family members and supporters during their very malicious attempt to link me to the December uh, alleged coup. Mm -hmm. This same government targets my sister in a crowd. Of all the people, well, it was someone who was attacked. So I told them, so this was my advocacy to restrain the PIU. And I told them, you were singling out this statement where I said this, these people will pay the price. I said that the statement after that, in the same post, actually bears out what I was doing. Because I was alerting the European Union and other development partners that some of the funds that they are giving to the Gambia police force may end up be being given to the paramilitary to terrorize opposition supporters. And I said, this is normal advocacy because if you want government to behave in the right way, more often than not, if you involve the development partners, they tend to, to, to behave better. So I told him it's advocacy. It was not meant to uh, incite violence or to take any revenge. I said, if anything, I had intentions, and I did at the time, mm -hmm. to take legal action against certain members of the PIU who were identified to have uh, a link with the attack on my sister. And I said, as a president, did the... the, the the attack on UDP supporters when my nomination was rejected, it's in court. I, I hired a lawyer. We mobilized funds to sue the IGP and his team for, for the brutalization of Kebachati. So I explained to them clearly, 
it's my writing. You want me to explain. I have explained. I have no motive to attack your people. My character and record are out there. Even my worst enemies who are sincere know that Momoru Sabali will not be involved in violence. Talk less of taking the life of a young Gambian. No, it's impossible, unimaginable. So I explained the whole thing to them mm -hmm. Friday evening yeah. as usual. They pack their things and go, we are detaining you. <laughs> so I said, where are you detaining me? Because last time it was at the paramilitary. They said they'll detain me at the paramilitary. At night they bring in two cars, zigzag the whole urban area and took me to anti-crime. I said, I want you to tell me the truth. They told me they are detaining me at the police at Kairaba station. So you went there, there is a, a, yeah, a so segment behind the, what you call Kantuar. Mm -hmm. That's where the SIU left me. And we were sitting down there. All of a sudden, the PRU, a, P, a PRU troop came with their guns. You know, of course, my supporters were there, of course, concerned. Mm -hmm. They dispersed them. Along the way, one Lamin Fatayo, who works for the KMC project, the EU project at the KMC, he was arrested, brought in. Whilst you were detained there? Whilst I was Did detained there. Did they have any, or there was there any altercations between, with the police, the PIU? Yes, because they were insulting his mother and threatening him and telling him that you are threatening us, we are, you are threatening us, you are going to burn our houses, we will burn your houses, insulting his mother. And the PIU there and then gave instructions to the duty officers to put out in, inside in the cells where the hard criminals are that night. So the, the, the police complied. And in fact, later I told them, my friend, what you're doing is wrong. We are not detainees of PIU. It's SIU that brought me here. So PIU have no authority to give you instructions to put me in the cells when, I, when that was not the standing instruction. So Fataja was left there. Uh, he's an asthmatic, asthmatic, I understand. He had problems breathing. He told the police that he needed his inhaler. The police did nothing about it. The whole night he was banging on the door, shouting that he needed to be taken out just for five minutes. To have fresh air to breathe, they refuse until the morning. In the morning, the same PIU came again. And uh, they called Fatajo around, and for some reason, they just released him. At night, they came back again because they heard that my supporters were there. They came with their guns and masks and, you know, unnecessary drama. And I just look at them and I laugh because I'm like, you cannot intimidate me. This is not the first time I'm being arrested. I was arrested during the Jame era, taken to Mile 2, taken to NIA. It could not intimidate me. It could not silence me. I don't see a way that you can intimidate me and silence me in this country. It's not going to happen. Now, you were, you were, you, like you said, you were arrested during Jame time. Mm -hmm. You were, even went to Mile 2. Yes. You were arrested in December and this time. Mm -hmm. What would you say really was different, uh, f you know, with this detention? What was yeah, the main What was different, and, and I said it didn't ha happen even mm -hmm. during the Jame era when people knew I had an issue with Jame and he wanted me jailed and everything. Yeah. What was different was that I was detained by the state, mm -hmm. state agents, paramilitary coming with guns mm -hmm. and issuing threats. I've never had that experience. This time? This time I heard it. Wow. Never had the experience. It, it was shocking for me. Yeah. That a state can detain you and the same state where you are under detention come with guns in a government whose most famous slogan is never again. It's bad. Wow. Yeah. In December, you were arrested days, days after the alleged coup. And again, eight months down the line, uh, uh, days after the shooting incident, you were arrested again. Would you say it's a coincidence? I don't think it's a coincidence. I think the gov this government has a plan because they've done everything to get me to support them. I have refused. They have uh, tried all means to silence me. They have failed. Now I think they're just deliberately looking for the slightest opportunity to link me to some crime that they can use to go to the law courts and lock me behind bars or perhaps scare me to leave this country. And none of these two will happen, inshallah, because nobody can cage Mohamed Sabal. I have my God-given right to speak, and I will continue speaking and speaking the truth as I see it in the interest of the public. Nobody can stop that, inshallah. Are you worried that you, you're being linked, you know, you, you, I mean, you're arrested right after this major incident? These are serious, serious incidents. Yes. Yeah, it, it's, 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 a, it's a real concern because uh, really uh, I'm no stranger in this country. Everybody knows Mumuru Sabali. And everybody who knows Mumuru Sabali, who's sincere, knows that I would not do anything to break the law. Talk less of violent crimes like treason and murder. Even my worst enemies who are sincere 
know that there is no way that I can get involved in these things. So it's really worrisome that the government has targeted the worst crimes possible in the country, treason and murder, and tried to link me to them when in reality they know, Adam Abaro knows that I had nothing to do with the alleged coup. He knows I have nothing to do with this alleged murder. But you, but you are not linked to any of this, though. It's just you've been questioned right after. But yes. obviously, rightfully so, you have also made comments, right? Absolutely. How can, you prove, uh, how can you prove that they're trying to link you to any of this? Well, Is I, there any proof? I am a politician, mm -hmm. a social media commentator. Yeah. And I'm all over social media. I have a right to speak. Yeah. In the first case, I... Sp I it was uh, advice I was giving to some TikTokers. Yeah. Somebody cut a, a, a portion, portion of, of that, that mm -hmm. and decided to publish it. They picked that to try to link me to an alleged coup and it failed. Mm -hmm. And I believe 100% that those who gave the instructions for me to be arrested knew I had nothing to do with the alleged coup. But they just wanted to use the coincidence to try to link me so that they can put me in one place and silence me. This one again. I, in fact, I saw a particular online paper that said that I was arrested because of comments I made about the shooting of the paramilitary. I never ever made, it, made any comment no. about the shooting of the paramilitary. I made my social media advocacy regarding police brutality. Yeah. Two, three days later, the alleged murder happened. Noise started coming from NPP chat rooms and a certain government official whom I feel too dignified to make him relevant by mentioning his name, a government official paid by our salary, fed by our taxpayers' money, coming out to say that I and my sister should be arrested. And before that, some NPP forums, I was threatened with my sister that they would attack me, they would kill me and my sister. NPP forums, they, the, the WhatsApp audios are right there. In fact, one of our UDP supporters, Sajo Dabo, made a whole YouTube, uh, an audio that was... Uh, it are published on YouTube mm -hmm. uh, saying that certain uniformed men were threatening my life and, and he exposed them. But the police never took any step on these things. And, and this is the irony of it. A single 30 second audio from a UDP supporter insulting, allegedly insulting or allegedly threatening somebody, you will be called for questioning and detained immediately even if they don't have evidence. But you can have a dozen and dozens of NPP people calling out my name, threatening me. Uh, uniformed men threatening me and the police and the entire security outfit and the government will pretend that it's not happening. Do we have two laws in this country? One for government supporters and one for the opposition? Is this the justice we're praying for in our national anthem? Talking, talking about that, your party, um, your party have had its share of issues with the PIO. Mm -hmm. I remember some time back um, there was a video that went viral where PIU officers recorded themselves saying they um, they had attacked or tear gas the UDP officers and they were celebrating that. When it went viral, the office of the IGP issued a statement and said they was they were investigating the officers <laughs> and they will they will punish them. Now, what have you heard anything from that incident? Because I do know. Um, we need to protect law, office, law enforcement officers. Uh, they are good men and you know, they, they, they swore to protect lives and citizens in this country. But again, their job is to protect us. But when this video came out, uh, the IGP issued a statement. And I was just reading through it before I came where he said they were going to, uh, they suspended, they're investigating and they will, um, they will do something after. Do you, know that, do you know if anything was done about that case? I've not known a single case where police br brutality led to any action, disciplinary action from the level of the po police authorities. And, and this is very unfortunate because like you said, the police officers themselves, whether it's paramilitary or regular duty, they deserve our respect and they deserve to be protected. Yeah. But when you have a few rogue elements mm -hmm. brutalizing people and then celebrating it, and then you have a gov an advisor to the president coming out in video celebrating the tear gas attack on lawyer Dabo's house where women were beaten and brutalized, tear gas, hospitalized. Up to this day, the police have not taken a single step. The Keba Chati case during my nomination, the police were aware of it. They saw the videos. We know that some top police officers were actually themselves shocked when they saw the videos and they were telling their men, I mean, how can you do this? And the cameras were on. 
And in fact, when Keb Achati's case started and we started going there to show solidarity and sympathy, we got word from the police that they would come and visit him. Even if they did just that, you would have had a signal that they actually care. And if they did it, they are not just protecting Keb Achati. And the op um, oh man, I, I don't even care whether Keba is opposition or not. He's a citizen of the country. Mm -hmm. They would not just be protecting a civilian citizen. They would be protecting their own men. Because if a few elements in the security forces are going rogue and doing these kind of things, they're giving a bad name to the entire force. But if the leadership of the police is seen to be taking steps, I mean serious steps, to try to rectify these wrongs, I think that would, that would assuage the public to know that, okay, some of these incidents will happen naturally because no human being is perfect, talk less of an institution uh, peopled by thousands of humans. But if we know that if some of these incidents or accidents, as it were, happen, steps would be taken, I think it will reassure the public and the respect for the security services would, 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 would at least be higher than it is right now. You are the campaign manager for United Democratic Party, and you have a lot of support, especially the, when it comes to the young folks in the party. Um, a lot of the times when your party comes in contact with law enforcement, mm -hmm. many a time, mm -hmm. it's either your, the supporters are tear gas or there's an issue. It's always the issue. Mm -hmm. and, and I said this um, two days ago when, I was, when you guys were detained and I was doing a Facebook Live. It seems like there is this um, thing between the UDP and the police. The UDP members, naturally, you talk to them, they say, um, in fact, the party military said something, and that was very alarming. During the press conference when mm -hmm. you were uh, in detention, mm -hmm. he said, UDP, if that's the way the party leader feels, and he's, he brought, uh, um, he, he said, uh, he brought, men she mentioned exactly the incident that happened at his house. Mm -hmm. And then the police at some corner also might be feeling whenever they come out, they always look at us as they are, uh, as somebody who don't like them. So they come in, in defense, defensive, and the UD becomes in defensive. And at some point, everybody thinks, I'm not, I cannot say use the word enemy, but everybody comes in tense because UDP is thinking, oh, yeah, we know they're going to tear gas us, but we will still go. And the police say, yeah, they're going to cause trouble, we are, so we're going to tear gas them. At some point, there should be something. What do you think from, you know, uh, from the leadership point of view from the police and the UDP? You know, UDP are citizens, and the police are here to protect every citizen. What do you think needs to be done to bring, uh, to, to stop this kind of strange relationship that seems to be existing even though you know it's not like it's been designed or something but it's just there right now and this is fact well you know for me i don't think this should be a difficult problem to resolve yeah if the political leadership well, will is there mm -hmm. at the level of government mm -hmm. because personally i don't think there's any natural hatred mm -hmm. between the udp and the police i don't think the police the majority of the police, yeah. I can peg it at even 90%, I don't think they hate UDP. Okay. The majority of UDP, I can peg it at 95%, they didn't hate the police, and they know that the police have a job to do, and that job includes protecting UDP members. What's so the, what, is, what, what's, what is the problem there? The problem is Barrow's party, NPP, interfering with the work of the police. They are the ones talking in their chat rooms, mm -hmm. uh, set, uh, reporting UDP members, either rightly or wrongly. Any little incident that happens, they'll ask the police to pounce on UDP, they'll give names, and the police would go and arrest our supporters. And exactly, the, the, you know, I, I see my friend, Babu Karbahum, and others kept saying, Sabali, well, um, Sonko, and others should be arrested, and that really happened. Well, Is that what I, you're I trying to say? To I mean, I will, I will say the name. I, I don't I want mean, to give him the dignity of mentioning his I, name, because I, 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 do I do a lot of salawat, so we might bless his name a little bit. This ah, is okay. Maulid Nabi. All right, okay. <laughs> but I mean, he's my friend, that's these why. These people, I, yeah. he's even threatening the IGP. Yeah, but I, if I, NPP threatens the police and IGP, that's okay. It's other citizens. So, so my point is, and it's not an excuse for the IGP and the police command. Because you are not paid by NPP, you are not paid by UDP. We all pay our taxes and you work for all of us. We are all equal citizens. Mm -hmm. But if the NPP goons can go up to the IGP's office and threaten him and make him swear by the Quran, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like a circus. So is this NPP constantly 
threatening police officers, threatening the IGP, and there's evidence there on social media. This is what compromises the ability of the police mm -hmm. to do their job with professionalism and integrity. For me, for me, mm -hmm. the solution is for President Adam Abaro, who is the president of this country and commander in chief of the armed forces, to take his responsibility and restrain his party's uh, hooligans. Because it's not the whole of NPP. We know decent people in NPP yeah. who would not want to interfere with the work of the police or try to get the opposition into trouble just because they are in power. So th 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 there is a group there that the president and his men need to restrain. And the police also need to take their stance. I repeat, I don't think there is any deep-seated hatred or animosity between the UDP and the Gambia police force. And what I can tell you personally, uh, I have no problem with the police force as an institution. Yeah. I can tell you, 97% of this police force, they love me, I love them. They respect me, I respect them. But I, I get more, more respect and more honor from the Gambia police force today than when I was Secretary General Minister of Presidential Affairs. And I love and respect the police because my sister is, is, a, sir, yeah. is, is a top police officer and I, I lived in police lines. And these young men and women in uniform, they are my brothers. I deal with Gambian youths, whether you are UDP, even NPP youths. Whether you are police or army, we have the same mutual respect for each other. Mm -hmm. And I know what's happening in this police brutality, these incidents. I know there are police officers, officers and men who detest this. Maybe they will not be able to say it, but they don't like it. But if the president is interested in peace and stability, if the president is interested in peaceful coexistence between the different political actors, let him restrain uh, the few people within his party who are trying to make life difficult for the police. But let the police also be honest and sincere and professional enough to do their job, as we all swear when we serve, without fear or favor, you know, Ill, Ill will or affection. I, I don't think it's complicated. And I believe... To, and I'm speaking sincerely, Wallahi. If I don't believe it, I will say it. Yeah. Nobody control it. I believe this problem can be resolved, but the police command, the leadership, they have to take their stance. And President Barrow, as commander in chief, needs to help his men to be able to do their job without much political interference. Listen to me. Okay. I said without much political interference, because I know politicians are politicians. Yeah. But the way the situation is going, it's about time that the NPP, they also restrain themselves a little bit and allow the police to do their job for our common interest because in situations of violence these clashes if police clash with uh, UDP on the Westfield Brikama Highway yeah who knows if Fatu Ture is going to be the victim and Fatu has nothing to do with it because he's just driving going to visit our family in Lamin yeah. this is not good for anybody and again I repeat I believe it can be resolved let us all have that will to be able to speak to each other to resolve these problems. I believe it can be done. And I, you think, because you see, um, I listened to some audios, especially from Rambo, uh, a serving diplomat mm -hmm. who is paid by the taxpayers, you know, uh, saying, you know, cautioning the IGP. Yeah, well, just say threatening him. His exact words, IGP, Mina Lala Mola Ekaminfo, Mary Kuemu UDP, let And for those kind of statements, do you think those trigger some of these arrests? Obviously. From, you know? obvious. It's the same if, guy. Because if they're telling you you are UDP, you want to show UDP some restraint, you know, and be tough on them just to, to satis satisfy those who are accusing you of that. Do you think, it's a human nature, do you think some of those things would trigger some of the things that it's you know, your party observed? It's quite obvious that him mm -hmm. and other members said the police should arrest me. Mm -hmm. And the police arrest me, of course, so the IGP is under pressure. And, and, and the entire police command. So, so this is really, Fatu, this is really unhealthy. And uh, uh, this is unnecessary drama because the subregion is a little bit too volatile. Gambia is seen as the oasis, the bastion of peace and stability. Let us not create unnecessary drama. I'm not saying that there would not be incidents between the police and civilians. It, it's just normal. But let us not push the police and pit them against citizens of this country who are law-abiding because of our, our political interests. It's not good for anybody. Even those who are doing it, they just don't know. It's just ignorance. But it's not good for them because this country belongs to all of us. If conflicts erupts here, who can control it? 
who knows where this, this, the effect of the conflict is going to be. You know, I think this is really bad. And like I said, I believe it can be resolved. And we should all work together to resolve this. We should all work. And I think that is the key word. We should all work towards uh, resolving this because this kind of tension doesn't look. If you're just joining us, I am here in the studios. Uh, today I am with uh, Honorable uh, Momodu Sabali. Momodu Sabali is the campaign manager for the United Democratic Party. If you have been following Kerfatu, he was recently uh, arrested and questioned uh, about a post he made on Facebook. So today we're here to talk about that. And of course, uh, if you're just joining us, Seno Stars, like I said, Kanaba Dibun Kayaki. No, Right now, ning anything. So you click the drum, yes, Click click So you are Thank you. Sabali, a lot of people said some argue that um some argue that as a young leader mm -hmm. who is loved by a lot of the young people in this country, mm -hmm. um, as a political fi a major a figure in the major political party, mm -hmm. sometimes your utterances are not measured. People say sometimes you get too emotional and in your in your <laughs> utterances and your postings. Um, when you make personal when you make this personal statement, shouldn't that come from someone? Should that come from someone uh, like your caliber, somebody? who serves as a big role model to a, young, a lot of young people. I say this a lot of times, and I, you know, it's not because you're my brother from Lemon, I say this. Tell me somebody at your age who, was, who worked at the central bank. Some, tell me somebody at your age who was the director of budget at your age. Show me somebody in this, in this country who served as secretary general, head of civil service, minister of presidential affairs at your age. I don't see it. You, you know, you, 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 you are that role model to a lot of people, especially for me and a lot of people from Lamen. We look up to you, and that's why a lot of people say, from you know, not because I don't speak from it. I'm not a politician, but I look at this brother who I come from the same village, and, you know, how, you know, I look up to him growing up. You know, that's how I look at it, and I, and I see all the things that you go through, but still, you know, when I speak about you, uh, I, you know, because that's how I feel. That's how I feel about it. I remember when I had an interview with Auntie Jay, and I said it, and I got emotional. She got emotional. But that's how I feel deep down. And I think a lot of people feel that, you know, at your age, all of this thing happened. But at your age, you were banned for life. I, I don't know what you have because I don't see it. But you were banned for life because of, you know, by a commission. Mm -hmm. You were um, stop from contesting uh, president and uh, to be elected by your own people. You cannot work in any public office in this country, but you are still very strong. You make these utterances, and but, you know you should be a signing example for a lot of us to say. With all of these things, I'm still here. I'm happy. I'm smiling. I have a beautiful family. I'm doing all of this. So sometimes when you make those utterances, people see with his caliber. Why does he speak like this sometimes? <laughs> why? Don't you think sometimes you should be measured? Because when something like happens, it affects not just you and your family. It has a lot of people. You know, Fatu, there is a global conspiracy to control what people say, especially people like me who have a following, who have influence, to try to dictate what people say, not only to silence them, but to sometimes to micromanage mm -hmm. how they operate, how they dress, how yeah. they smile, how they laugh, how they cry. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the ethos of uh, conformism. Mm -hmm. that the majority of people want to tread. But I'm a student and a disciple of the American philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson. They call him the sage of Concord. You know, so we are non-conformist and we will never conform. And that is the thinking and the philosophy behind my hashtag can't cage me. Nobody can cage me. It's the desire of the society to try to control you, to direct you, to dictate you. Nobody can do it to me. Yeah. Patu, I'm, you know, you, you think young people who follow me, they are fools. They are following me for a reason. And, and the connection with you and them. Th they are doing it for a reason. They, 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 I may mean, have a few critics and a few jealous people out there trying to smear my image. 
but my real followers, my audience, mm -hmm. they know me. They know that my heart is in a good place. And uh, they know that I would never, ever direct mm -hmm. them towards any, any direction that would put them in trouble or stunt their growth or make them to break the laws of the country. They know me. They know it. So whether I'll be measured or not, Fatu, I'm not an imam. I'm a politician. Sometimes I'm measured. Sometimes I'm not measured. Nobody dictates to me when I'm measured and when I am not. Trust me, my posts on Facebook, my speeches, everything mm. is based on inspiration. Ask the UDP people who follow me. Yeah. I do audios every other day. When I'm inspired, when I'm not inspired, it goes for weeks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they call me, they are alarmed, they think maybe I've switched over to another party. I don't force things, I don't rush them. I act based on inspiration. When that inspiration comes, I give it out as it comes, regardless of whether Fatu likes it or Nyang Jai approves of it. That's not my problem. A politician, opposition in Africa, you want to be measured and that's your Bible, you will fail dismally. All I care about is that I don't wrong you, I don't offend you, I don't break the laws of the land. But being measured or not, and who, who decides what's measured and what is not, I know I will make mistakes. I'm a human being. I'm not pretending to be perfect. I'm not interested in that. Mm -hmm. When I make mistakes, I apologize. Yeah. When I make wrongs, I amend. But I'm not going to live my life according to the dictates and the perceptions and the whims and caprices of a few potential detractors. And to be fair, sometimes they are your loved ones. the overprotective of you. Yeah. Like my mother's sister who traveled from Badibu to come to my house yesterday and say, I should stop talking about this government. It's not going to happen in a billion years. I'm going to speak as I see fit. I'll try as much as I can not to break the laws of God and the laws of man. Other than that, no, Father, it's not going to happen. So during your detention, um, you know, in as much as you are loved by people, like you said, you are also being you're hit by a lot of people as well. I mean, I saw a lot of people who say, um, Kasabali might not be my cup of tea, mm -hmm. but what is happening to Sabali today can happen to you or another person. To, uh, to those people, what do you say? Well, I mean... Because, I mean, actually, you're not just defending Sabali, you're defending democracy. That, and is, rule the, of that, law. that is the point, Fatu. Yeah. And, and that's why sometimes, like these things, I was detained for what, four days. Yeah. <laughs> My first detention, I was detained for four months, five months. So it's nothing new to me. I can deal with these things. I know how to handle these mm -hmm. things. But the point is, who is the next person? Is the, the so question. it's not about the personality. It's the principle that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And even NPP people mm -hmm. should condemn this kind of illegal, malicious arrest. We've seen this over and over. Yeah. Sometimes those asking for people to be arrested ended up being arrested at a baila. Yeah. What is important is for the government to conduct itself mm -hmm. according to the laws of the country. And to be, I mean, human systems, institutions, they are not perfect. But for the government of the day to try as much as they can to be fair to the citizens of this country. Because at the end of the day, you know what's my guiding principle? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's divine law, not even this mbojo human laws that can be doctored against people and institutions. No, 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 no. I believe that whatever you do, hellfire and, and paradise is there, but you, you, it gets requited here. Whatever you do here, you see it here. I believe that wallahi fundamentally. And the, those in power should know that. You do it here. Mm -hmm. Let's be fair to each other. That's not rocket science. Let's uh, govern the country according to law and allow the laws and the institutions that govern the law to function professionally. That's not rocket science. That is there for all of us. It's not just the opposition. You never know. Today is me, tomorrow who is it going to be? Only Allah knows. But we don't wish ill for anybody, even our opponents in the political game. We just want fair play. We just want a level playing field. Is it going to be 100% level? Maybe not. But don't go out of your way to target people, you know, try to smear their character, try to get them into it. It's, it's not right. And it's going to backfire on you by the grace of Allah. It's a just God. You, you, you know, I, I, you know when, you, when, when you're detained, I don't worry about you because mm -hmm. I know your mental state of mm -hmm. mind. But, you know, when I had Auntie Jay here the last time, I put this question to her. And I asked the family, hey, the family, I just wanted to know your take on this. Um, during Jame time, you went to jail. Yeah. You, you, went, you went through everything. Yeah. And then when the new government came, 
you know, I remember the first time you said, I just want to observe. I don't mm -hmm. want to say anything. Yes. A lot of people even said you were supporting Barrow. But mm -hmm. at that point, you said you just want to see what was yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. Even though mm -hmm. you were banned. Mm -hmm. You were banned to work mm -hmm. for life. Yeah. You could not run for public office. You, are not, you cannot do anything, basically. And now, recently, you're going in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. I don't know for how long will that continue. Yeah. Now, <laughs> all of these things, do you ever sit and say, at this point, I just maybe I should just leave, go get a decent job. You are a master's holder. You you know beautiful public life. Maybe I should just go and, and, and get a decent job somewhere and, and go live a beautiful life with my family, <laughs> very young family. Well, that, those thoughts do happen, Fatou, to be honest, and uh, both from within and from without. Like somebody sent a message to my niece that I should go to Dubai immediately. He's get me a job and blah blah blah. So I. I just tell her, tell him it's not going to happen in a billion years. Because uh, countries are built by citizens. And wherever there is a great nation, there are names and so names associated with its struggle. People who toiled and moiled died. People died for their country. I mean, people struggled for their country, were exiled for their country. Mm -hmm. You know, America is the Benjamin Franklins, the Thomas Jeffersons, you know. Some of them, they got nothing out of it, but America is the greatest country today. Nelson Mandela, 27 years in uh, Robin Island. You think he 10 years at uh, Pretoria, I actually visited his house with, with, when Zuma was there. You think that compensates 27 years? But it's an ideal and a principle that's liberating and inspiring millions of millions of people around the world. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba lost their lives, lost families. And the success of Islam today in terms of numbers, they didn't even witness 10% of that. But it's a principle and ideal worth it. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to pay the price. My family, I really care about them. They know I don't want even a fly to touch them. They know how, how much I love them. But sometimes, Fadu, these things, if Allah puts you on a path, everybody has his path. Yeah. And, and sometimes you get to a level in your life where those small voices speak to you and you know the path to tr tread, even though ulti uh, occasionally the satanic voices will come either in human form or within yourself. No, it's not worth it. Do this, do that. You know, what I believe is that I have a mission. I didn't put myself in this situation. But Allah de decreed that I would be on this path. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if I leave this path, go get a nice job at UN or IMF, I will not be happy. I've seen people, both in here and in Senegal, you leave your country, I mean, not even for bad reasons or anything. Mm -hmm. Go work for UN, IMF, World Bank, make all the money at the end of the year, come back and start again where Mungu Savali is today. Because you want, I mean, at some point, your, 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 your vision, your goals cannot just be food, shelter, and clothing. You have to live for something higher and bigger than yourself and your family. So before going there, and I mean, you've seen people like Shafti Jan Gajo. They were successful yeah. around the world, had to come back to Senegal. We've seen people here, even during the 2021 election, some of them just decided to go back again. You know, they are seasonal politicians, just like seasonal farmers. But, you, you, I mean, you have to give credit to them. They could have stayed permanently, but they decided to come and see if they could help the country go on a better path. This is my mission. I'm glad that my immediate family, my wonderful wife, whom I call my better brain, a fantastic Senegambian queen, Jane Bati, that's how she understands. Uh, sometimes I feel bad uh, how they suffer. I have children outside this country you know yeah. um, that's uh, but uh, i'm glad that hey, at Mohammed, least yeah mohammed uh, sabali <laughs> one, of, one yeah. of my good friends here when yeah. he came to do his final thesis here mm -hmm. i linked him with my friend who is a professor because he was doing some research in literature so that professor called me said you know i he wants me to stop this because he knows my potential i was his boss in the public service he knows what i can do he said sabali you know i wanted to advise you to stop this politics and do something he said mohammed was my hope but when I spoke to him, and my new Muhammad does not support my political party. He is his own man. Yeah. He said, but when I told Muhammad uh, that you should stop this, Muhammad told me, <laughs> no. In fact, I'll encourage him to, to do more <laughs> in, in his path. Alhamdulillah. It yeah. has to be done. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to do yeah. it. Now, let's come back to Gambia. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have not had you on the platform since. So let's talk about you know, our economy. It's as bad as it gets, and it's going to get worse. But we, like what, I said. what do you mean as bad as it, and it's going to get worse? Well, how? If Why? you have inflation at 18.4%, uh, unprecedented for the past 30 years, macroeconomic management, the debt level, 
you know, from where they took it off when they came to now uh, depreciation of the exchange rate, uh, prices of uh, goods and services, and uh, the epileptic nature of electricity and water services. You know, for the first time, Gambian women coming out with their buckets to welcome the president to tell him they don't have uh, water power. It's, it's, it can't get worse. The situation is bad and it's going to get worse because government is not taking the right steps. I've advised them for more than five, six, seven years. Pandeli Toure is old. Uh, Star FM was always my, my key witness because that's where it all started. After I gave them a break for a year or so, and then I started to advise them because certain moves they were taking around the economy, I knew that it's, it's a not, economics is a, not, it's a science. You do certain things, you get certain results. It's incontrovertible. I advised them, they never listened. The situation started getting bad and bad and bad until now. And still, mm -hmm. they have not changed course. Because things are right now in, in Turkey, for instance, Erdogan thought he could play games with the economy, and I think they even called it Erdoganomics or something, and you know, they were letting inflation run rule. Now they have to change course immediately. So Gambia was supposed to do something like that. Extensive fiscal expansion. Inflation is going up. Exchange rate, your prices are going up. At some point you say, okay, now we need to stop. We need to reverse. But it's still the same thing. What I've seen though recently, uh, C.D. Keta's mid-year uh, report to the assembly, I found that quite interesting. How? I, I, in that they... Their expenditure, they mm -hmm. were able to maintain it yeah. a little bit below the target for, for the first half of the year. Is it because, because the, the grants that were supposed to come in did not come in? Uh, well, I, I think there were some, some, some level of uh, shortfalls in terms of inflows, yeah. not just grants, even inflows, revenue. Inflows, yeah, revenue, yeah. But far too, I know how government was. I was budget director. Yeah. You know, in fact, the first report, I, a journalist sent me a report from Standard. Mm -hmm. I was eager to jump on them. I could not see. I said, send me CD's food report. Mm -hmm. I think, surprisingly, mm -hmm. CD did quite well for the first half of this year. Uh, ironically, Ironic okay. ironically, it's his governor who is uh, being rogue with the economy. And I think CD should reign in his governor. You have a governor central bank who is behaving like a mid-80s economic planning and development minister. What do you mean by that? The, the governor is, is, is lending money to the government, and that's the most dangerous kind of lending. It's better for them to go to the markets, money markets, and take money than central bank financing. These road projects, buying buildings from government that the central bank doesn't need. The central bank is lending, lending money to government, and the central bank's ways and means of intervening in the foreign exchange market. We're hearing so many stories. Usually it's the Ministry of Finance that misbehaves, and then the central bank will call them in, even though they are our bosses, will take measures to try to curtail the impact of what they do. But here what I'm seeing, I am really, I'm really concerned. I'm really concerned with what's happening. And like I said, uh, there is no end of the suffering in sight. But, uh, but, 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 but our, our currency is pegged at a better, uh, better rate uh, against the dollar than any other currency in the sub-region. How do you explain that? <laughs> you know, Faru, what, what you don't know, the Gambia has had a... Uh, track record of macroeconomic stability. Mm -hmm. Gambia was the darling of the IMF and uh, some of these development partners after, of course, the mid-80s crisis when, uh, to his credit, the Sheriff Sekouba Sisi and his team came in and, and did really miraculous work in turning the situation around, stabilizing the economy. So when we come to a level where you start comparing Gambia with some of uh, these countries in the sub-region, because this place was the supermarket of the sub-region. People coming in from all over, buying stuff here. And that's why Gambia, if you look at the, the time series statistics of uh, imports in this country, mm -hmm. you find out that what Gambia imports is way too big for our consumption. But that's because they come in from Senegal, from Bissau, from Mali to buy from here. And that brings in foreign exchange that shows up our exchange rate. But because of these high tax levels and uh, inefficiency, in, inefficiency of the tax system, among other things, we've lost those advantages. And these are all the reasons where Gambians are seeing unprecedented suffering. So the government needs to rethink its strategies and uh, constrain themselves. But at least the first report, uh, the minister's first report. Yeah, surprisingly. Um, I, I think I st really, I'm, I'm going to study this further. But I know, like what you said, the sh shortfall in grant inflows, yeah. not just grant inflows, even revenues might have explained some of it. 
But I, like I said, Fatou, I, I was budget director. Mm -hmm. I know if government wants to stop spend money, there is nothing to stop government, even money they don't have. Yeah. So I think I'll give them some credit for, 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 for what I saw for what in saw. terms of performance for the first six months of uh, now this year. the Now, the, um, what is your assessment of the asset recycling that we have seen <laughs> that the government is taking? The ferry, the, 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 our bridge, the Senegambia bridge, you know, um, they, they, they have an agreement with, the Af with Africa 50 to, to, to do asset recycling. I mean, a lot of people, I don't know what you take, is on the say, we can do way more, more we can make way more money than what, is Afri what Africa 50 is offering. Uh, so it's What's your take it's on that? It's bad and it's completely unjustifiable, unprecedented, and it just shows how desperate this government is to rake in cash now to spend when they could have gotten the same amount over a period of time. And it's a sign of the reckless fiscal indiscipline of this dispensation. A fresh asset like the Senegambia Bridge, that is bringing you in. Uh, I think what is the statistic? About, about fifty million. The minister said about uh, forty to fifty million. Because the, mini the other Come minister on. said about forty something. The other said fifty. Come so on. it's about yeah, about a, yeah. Yeah, Come an on. asset that's giving you that. Why do you want to sell it? In thirty years, that is about three hundred million. What we know yeah. in asset recycling, what they're doing in the UK, for instance, and mm -hmm. it's a relatively new concept, yeah. old prison buildings, old uh, dysfunctional government uh, infrastructure, that's what you recycle. Those who are taking it over come in and uh, invest, and then the, there are spillover positive externalities. But a brand new asset, that is a grant, not only for the Gambia, because the bridge is supposed to benefit the entire sub-region in terms of... Uh, Mm -hmm. intra ECOWAS trade. Yeah. You take that and give it away because you want money in advance? No, Fatou, this is bad. It's bad. I completely condemn it. And I think uh, definitely the National Assembly should not allow it to happen, even though I'm hearing stuff like C.D. Keter saying he doesn't need the approval of, uh, yeah, he said that, yeah. of the Assembly. So I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's the dog wagging the tail or the tail wagging the dog. Should, the we, should we be worried because... If the if the if the if they recycle if they uh, put go if you if they have an agreement with Africa 50 for the for the ferries now what we have also seen the president have set up a commission a new commission which will look into the SOEs <laughs> now for me I'm, I'm I don't know the government have not said that but during the swearing in ceremony the mandate of that commission if you look at it is number one to look at these SOEs to see how viable they are as a business, to see whether they should be liquidated. All of these are the mandate. Meaning, if the commission comes out and say, oh, Gamtel, for example, are not making money, they cannot do this, they don't have this, so they will say, oh, let's do asset recycling, get money, or let's, let's get shares, people buying shares. Do you think, are you also foreseeing something like that with the establishment of the SOE commission? I am totally against the establishment of this commission, and I think Barros' advisors are fooling him into doing things that would be detrimental to the entire country, not just the economy. Uh, the Gambia public service has a structure uh, that, uh, whatever, has been functioning by our standards. Yeah. I think President Barrow, when he won the election, he wanted to tinker with the system to make it a little bit more efficient. I believe he had good intentions. But when he start split the position of Secretary General to create a Secretary General and the Chief of Staff, Chief of Staff I said, this is not going to work yeah. as former Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service. Yeah. You cannot have two captains in a ship. What has it created for the government? The government is dysfunctional. You have a Chief of Staff that is dishonest and is misleading the President. And you have a better qualified, more intelligent, more decent more responsible secretary, secretary general, general. you sideline him i understand sir now some of these public officials civil servants will have to create two files one for the <laughs> chief of staff one for the uh, secretary general creating that office of the full uh, office of public service minister of the civil service yeah is completely redundant you have a secretary general head of the civil service so what happened and i'm sure if president barrow has independent advisors who would have assessed what happened since he created these new structures, I think his system has become more corrupt and more inefficient. It's no. bad. So let me get to the, the commission thing. Yeah. You've had that experience. Now, you have government ministries. Each of these parastatals reports to a line ministry, a line ministry. who advises the president. Yeah. Each of them has a board. 
my friend ya ron kanyine fo barod la masakunda na la mura kam ta goni ta ta lonyini e ko lokuli ya tale me fanyun no e lo la fa wokan e ko ibe fanyun na ibe fanyun na no le bang i mean i think it's completely disingenuous and i believe there is some mafia cabal in this country walking outside of government who has control of this government so they want to bring in their people to supervise some of these parastatals and sell them to their friends and colleagues in the private sector in the gambia and abroad so that they can loot the entire country's uh, commanding heights our most strategic assets you know if this government cannot build this country they should not destroy what they made i'm totally against this state owned uh, enterprises commission i think it's bad now i'm still i'm going to bring you back to the position of secretary general and mm -hmm. um, the chief of staff cuz you know the secretary general is the head of the civil service yes and it is always at the seat of the presidency because mm -hmm. the next the secretary general should be next to the president yes you know yes. that's how it has been from jawara time jame mm -hmm. time up to now mm -hmm. and he had worked especially during jawara time and jame time mm -hmm. now the chief of staff now is the one at the office of the president the secretary general is is, is <laughs> outside state house now and just like you explain how does this affect the proper functioning of the civil service who does these people report to the presidency now, you know, the, like the chief of staff is responsible for the presidency. Who is this uh, secretary general responsible for at this point? How does it work? Really, I, I don't even know. I, I think the entire government uh, structure is confused. There's a lot of infighting, you know. And uh, like I said, it all resulted with this creation of this position of chief of staff, which was completely unnecessary and redundant. Mm -hmm. You have a secretary general here. Well, Burroughs' problem was he... Uh, he never had the ideal secretary general and head of the civil service since he came into office. That's his problem. So the office has been a little bit inefficient. Like I said, I think he had good intentions mm -hmm. by splitting these two to make sure things work better. Unfortunately, this position of chief of staff, is it even legal to create this office? This is the question. Was it budgeted for? The, I mean, the budget is one thing. You okay. can create a budget for anything, anytime, even oh, in December. Oh, That's easy for us. When you say legal, but, what? I mean, what we know is the position of secretary general is in the Constitution. It's in our laws. Yes. Chief of staff, where is it? Which, which law brought it into this country? So even the person holding that office today, he cannot explain this. Well, what happened is Barrow was made to believe that this guy is the one who is going to bring the uh, elixir vitae, the, the magic formula. Hmm. But as we speak... I know that President Barrow knows that he has made a very bad mistake in creating this office and appo appointing the present holder. And uh, I think pr the president might be looking for a way of resolving this problem. But I think the first step is to just cancel that office, appoint somebody that you can, because it's the president's prerogative. Yeah. But I think uh, the current Secretary General is intelligent enough, mature, honest, and dedicated to run the public service and be the president's uh, principal advisor. I think the position of chief of staff should be abrogated immediately if the president wants at least better efficiency in his system. From my experience, not just knowing the public staff, knowing the personalities involved in these official functions. Now, I, I just hope, that, yeah, there's, there is definitely some mix up when it comes to that because, you know, you don't even know. Because when it comes to the SOEs, I kept saying, um, I don't know the reason why, you know, you want to do this, but you said, like you said, all these SOEs, they have a line ministry. Absolutely. I remember working in Gamtal, when we prepare our budget, this is the time that mm -hmm. companies you know, are preparing mm -hmm. their budgets. Mm -hmm. They're preparing budgets, it goes to the managing management, and management prepares it and sends it to the board, board looks at it, it goes from the board, it goes to the ministry, and it goes to the office of the president. And that's yes. the line. That's how yes, it goes. Yes, yes. The office of the president, and the, you know, and they get approval from that. We would process. You, they approve. process it or, and or, approve. Or otherwise, or, otherwise, yes. or send it back. Mm -hmm. I remember there is a particular, like I think last year also, Gamtel budget did not even come until February because he was not ready. He was not approved mm -hmm. because they sent it back to say no, this, to ask questions. Now, if this is the line of chain of work, and this is how it goes. Whatever is approved by the office of the president is what is budgeted for. And you know what you have approved for this. So is what they need to spend and how they spend it. Now, every quarter, obviously, if you want to be accountable, you want them to be accountable of what they're doing, you should be able to ask quarterly updates on, on their budget. What have they done? What have they, are, you, are they spending on in, term, in line with what they were allocated for? Now, creating another group of... Uh, company like uh, the SOEs, is it 
budgeted for number one. Um, how are we paying for it? When the minister himself had told us that the reason why uh, they are cancelling traveling is because there are issues and they, they, all the inflows are not coming in regularly, so we are struggling with financing. Why do we, is it, it is even um, financially, is it even viable increasing more on, it, it, on it our already not. struggling budget? It is not, and it's going to be a huge burden on the system. So the system itself will become less efficient yeah. because the bureaucratic structure has been further convoluted with one more layer. Yeah. Uh, before that, you just have to deal with your board and the line ministry. Now it's the SOE commissions with people planted there with vested interests. You have to buy them cars get them fuel, get them uh, health insurance with their families, get them office space. Support staff. Re re support staff, really far. It's really, really bad. Things are getting worse and worse in this country because the government doesn't have a direction and the government is not sitting down to have a session of introspection to see for them honestly what's working. And I tell President Barrow easily what's not working is the incentive mechanism in the government has been corrupted. Human beings respond to incentives as clearly elucidated by uh, Ivy League economist William Easterly in his book, uh, The Elusive Quest for Growth. If human beings do good things and you reward them, they'll continue to do good things. If they do bad things, you punish them, they'll stop it and start, start behaving like right. But you have a system where who gets appointed into a lucrative position in SOEs mm -hmm. depends on his political affiliation or his relationship with the president or the minister. So long as that is happening, these SOEs will not function properly. So long as if a Laminjai goes to work at Gambia Ports Authority and the wife gave him a yellow shirt as a birthday gift, because of that you label him and you move him from Gambia Ports Authority to another institution, you will continue to weaken this institution. And this is what is happening. Appointments are on patronage, on political affiliation or personal relationships. So even if you bring... 10 more SOE commissions, layer upon layer, the system will just get worse. The system should be clean, corruption should be frowned on and punished. But where you have a minister getting his ministry to <laughs> award contracts to his private company and gets away with it without a frown, yeah. where you have a president saying that audit reports are just opinions, mm -hmm. the system is not going to get better. Forget it. Oh. Yes. But it, now, um, the government, the minister said we are doing well. Uh, when it comes, I know inflation is high. I am not doing well because my cash power is more expensive today. <laughs> uh, the bag of rice is more expensive. But as an economist, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you guys speak, you say we're doing well. But as an ordinary Gambian, well, we, we are not doing well be because <laughs> things are expensive. How I, do you explain I, I, that I, I, no, no, ratio? I, I, because I, I saw the <laughs> vice president when he was answering questions at the National Assembly said, you know, they have injected almost... 10.4 million uh, billion, I think, either million or billion, excuse me, I don't know exactly, into uh, poverty alleviation in the country. Now, if that is injected <laughs> to support, um, to support like uh, le the less privileged families, but again, you see the National Assembly saying 100 million of what of food items had gone missing at the, from the NDNMA, NDNMA, disaster relief. These are things that, you know, you cannot just understand how they happen. I can understand you saying 10 million or 5 million, even 2 million is missing. 100 million worth of food items that is supposed to be for people. How are we doing well as well, an economist? Are we really doing well? Actually, if you say economists are saying we are doing, CDK is not an economist as far as I'm concerned. He's a finance guy. Oh. So he, and, and, and this is the problem about appointing somebody as finance minister who is not an, CD is not an economist. So he doesn't mm. even know what he's talking about. The situation is bad. It will get worse. It is good for a few of them who have access to more resources than they are entitled to. And they spending like more than 50% of their time outside of this country. So they don't even know what the temperature is in this country. It's because the ACs are brand new and they have standby generators. They don't care whether NAWEC works or not. So it's okay for them. So these are not economists saying. What the real economists in this country are all saying is that the situation is bad and it's getting worse. So with the vice president coming to say they are injecting money, you know, like, I, have a, I think it's Modi Bilokurubali. We once had this uh, conversation where mm -hmm. he said, you know, Gambians have this issue of throwing money at a problem. Money doesn't sol solve a problem. It's knowledge, it's in experience, it's honesty and integrity and smart, intelligent work that solves problems. Of course, you will need money to facilitate that because you need to pay the hands that do it. Mm -hmm. You need to buy the stuff. But any problem, we, we throw this money. Like mm -hmm. the president, when the floods happened the last time, 
How many million project is coming? Where is it going? Mm -hmm. So what the vice president said is belied by what the audit reports are revealing at the National and, and I want to commend the National Assembly. I'm not always their biggest fan, yeah. but these days what they are doing, especially our, our, our own caucus, caucus led by Honorable Alaji S. Davo. I think this is very important. And I, if I were President Barrow, mm -hmm. I would take a non-partisan stance on these revelations at the Assembly. Assembly, yes. And just let you process take its call. I'm not saying that if a particular ministry is accused of not being able to account for a certain money, you do jammer style and pick them and take them to drug squad or and I'm not saying that. But recommendations by the assembly should be looked into. By no, not even looked, looked but into. implemented Implemented according to due process. Pardo, this is not rocket science. Because if President Barrow really mm -hmm. wants the people who voted him into power to be happy, he should be interested in making sure that the monies that his government is pumping to alleviate poverty, they go to those women of Nyani Sukuta and, yeah. and, and Kiang Kiang. Kian Tankular. Yeah. This is not rocket science. So the monies are there, but because of the level of corruption and political brinkmanship, the money is not reaching where it is reaching. So I commend the UDP MPs for the great job they are doing. I think the NPP MPs should work with the opposition MPs and they all speak one language, the interests and benefit of the masses. I think this is a unique opportunity without any witch hunting or without any targeting of individuals just because they are in public office, recommendations are here. Let them be implemented according to law. I mean, I think I've seen the, some a lot of the NPP MPs, MPs also uh, coming, uh, you know, because some of them are members of the FRAP committee and they, mm. these recommendations come from them. But also, even at the judiciary uh, bill, <laughs> I mean, the MPP <laughs> members were vocal. They uh, were so uh, vocal, and you know, it was some of the MP, be, you, some of your UDP <laughs> MPs. Let's not get there. No, <laughs> let me make this clear. It was some of your UDP MPs who were saying, "Let's take it to the next stage and look at it." Well, they were being nice, but the NPP MPs, some of them were very vocal. What? I must say, though, some of your UDP MPs condemned it from the beginning, yeah. but there were others who were saying, "Let's take it." So the you know the NPP also. No, are, I, no I, I agree mm -hmm. that some of these NPP MPs are, are doing a fantastic job. We yeah. just want to encourage them, mm -hmm. whether they. Uh, UDP or NPP yeah. that let them work for the interests of our poor people, especially women and youths. Yes. Now to politics. Mm -hmm. UDP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the biggest and the baddest. Really? Unstoppable. No, you're not the biggest the, right the, now. The, the yellow tsunami. Right now, NPP is the biggest party because How? They, they won the presidency. What's With 400,000. Like how, 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 how many years ago? That is two years ago. Two years ago. Just that's two years that's ago. a long time in politics. No, they are the biggest. They no, have you need to update your IOS, man. We are, this is 2023. Hello. But they are the biggest party, right? They now. are not the biggest party. Two years ago, they may have been, according to Ali Umar Jai, but we just had elections. What do you mean, according to Umar Jai? That's what he said. I never accepted those. But you accepted these other results? Yes, though. because the same this Ali Umar time Jai. We, locked, we, 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 we had stop guard measures. These squirrels, all the holes they were going into, we had our guards there. So this one is authentic and we beat them. We are the biggest party. Party, we won the popular vote. NPP is opposition sitting on presidency. As Hussein Udawa said, we are no longer opposition from Banjul up to what is the name of the bridge? Pakaliba Bridge, Pakaliba Salo, Kabo Banjul. For Pakaliba Salo, you send double a man secundale. What is President Barola? I can't find a balloon. Kono man sa. Ntolle man sa te in banko kambi. Ha. Banko ben tolle bulu. We are the biggest party. We are the most resilient. We are the yellow tsunami, and nobody can stop us. Let's 2026, see. I'll invite you for tea in, in State House, inshallah. With who? Who is going to His be? His Excellency, the President, this, uh, Al Haji Usenu Numukunda Dabo. So, a lot of people, even your party members, yes. Molko, it's mm -hmm. about time. Is Rohedabo thinking about retiring? Why, 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 why should he retire? A lot of people said he went to election. Because a lot of you guys, Allah eh, Molu, Father. Allah Molu, Ika Foloko. You know, I see a lot of people saying, um, I saw where somebody said, Alko Dabo, Alko Baro, Manyana Tala, another Tamla. Why not? Ato Lafana Patili, the Mialanko, he ran for how many times? This is the third time. Is it for UDP? We go, we go for UDP among other competent people to so convince a party on means a can all candidate. Why do it? does it have to be him? Honey Kian called Nila Tolea. Cordala Saro is a Firinia Oya, Ye Baracania Oya. If you look at the farm, I think I can see what he's saying. I can't tell. He's our leader, he's our father, 
in a party that's the most democratic party in this country. Even NPP, if you look at their structures and congresses, they're just trying to copy UDP. No, I'm we, democratic. We are the I most democratic, democratic party but in this country. I dem democracy we have democratic processes Allah from Congress. our selection of councillors. What, what? what is the problem in the Congress? I'm democratic. No. Because All these positions were open democracy and contested. Democracy is not a good thing. We have to do a lot of against Sabali. We have to do a lot of things against Sabali. We have to do a lot of things against Lobbying is but part of democracy. No, the I biggest lobbies are in the in the in the mecca of democracy. What Washington DC uh, is normal. Alla democracy destar. Alla Congress nga kova le nga jere. Alla democracy destar. Democr Congress mo mo ya ke banko kang ika UDP tale ta ika copy. Mm -hmm. What a natural dasita. What on to lefisiata will do beti. We are still the champions of democracy in this country. From the ward councillor to the mayors, national assembly members positions in the party all goes through a democratic process. It is those processes that install His Excellency al Haji Hussein Udabo as the party leader and Secretary General. The same processes that installed him as flag bearer in the last election. Several people have interviewed him, asked him, is he going to stand in the next election? Yeah. He refused to pronounce him well, because he doesn't want to flout our democratic principles. Because it is the central committee that decides who becomes our flag leader, and the time has not come for that decision to be taken. When is that decision going to be taken? When the time arrives, we go into 2026. Why, 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 why is everybody in a rush? You know, Fatu, I think really, mm -hmm. maybe as campaign manager, I need to tweak my strategy. It looks like all Gambians are UDP. Everybody is interested in our affairs. Mm -hmm. I think we'll do better in 2020. We want to everybody, know. They, everybody is obsessed about our see, party. See, the thing. Alien tuye na kuol lafta ke lanya menga ke wanyama. The difficult? reason why we ask. Oppositions are government in waiting. Yes. And as the biggest opposition party, mm -hmm. we expect that you know you are going to be the biggest challenger to the to yes. the to the to the president. We are, right. So we want to know whether you are internally democratic. Nal I am telling Nal you, as an insider, you are, are an outsider. Yeah. Are you doubting me? Do you no, know I'm me not for doubting lying? you. I'm just saying yes. what I also see. Yes. So, but now, what will not happen, Faru, mm -hmm. in a billion years? Mm -hmm. is non-UDP members. Yeah. Telling UDP what to do with our party and who to be out in a billion in the UDP in Kolfango Barakata Watila. Imantrana Patio Rela Fantola Patio Vetamalanya Mete Ofo, Atakela in Banco Kang. Lan, Yalong Arabanico Lan, La Naki Atuna in Karun, Men and a Manki Amantra Kilan, whatever, whatever in Banco Kang. Napatio Lakta Mate and Bule Tambi. Inshallah, be in Mila. So, um, during the local government elections from the chairmanship to the council, mayor check council council mm -hmm. election or local government bay ali momentum mobile you guys you know build the momentum uh, considering coming from the presidential uh, how are you going to as campaign how are you going to keep that momentum to 2026 are you able to do that do you have the resources do you have the all it takes to be able to keep that momentum to the presidential yes indeed and alhamdulillah we thank allah for it mm -hmm. the base is solid uh, even those few people not quite few, actually, because some of our supporters really mm -hmm. lost team after the alleged loss yeah. of the 2021 election. Yeah. Uh, but with the rebound in the parliamentary and the local government elections, a lot of people has, have built up uh, energy and even outsiders wanting to join our party. Mm -hmm. So to build up that momentum for it's not difficult. UDP party, uh, I mean, politics is difficult. It depends mm -hmm. on money. Yeah. But our supporters are generally very content and we don't have to use money to induce uh, anybody I, I i go to some football tournament and inspire youths give them balls mudu krubali is in base they say what we eh ko mu fen gol ti de ato leta record ila moy loje 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 ato leta record alko baro e mul induce like karero le di ani barato al fanan katala al katol di molla so induce mo lo wote nin ta tanga kato di lan ko e fe akala ma fo e karto fa kari o be kala induce fen tinya dile I'm doing that now. Is, but, there, is there any election? But right yeah, okay, election time. No, 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 Mark. Many yeah, okay, follow. So uh, what's happening, what I'm telling you mm -hmm. is UDP, even the executive doesn't have to pull out money to yeah. hold activities. The, uh, the people of Kiang Nema, you know, these Kiang people, their economy is very, very subdued. There's no market in the whole of Kiang. So <laughs> but they held celebrations on their own. I mean, you, 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 I mean, you, you, you are awed mm -hmm. by the amount of resources that are. For me, that's, a, that's bigger than any political rally. They were celebrating the victory of their uh, ward councillor of, yeah. uh, I think it's uh, Jifarong Ward. Yeah. So you have all of these activities. The activities will continue. UDP in call, even right now, there's a UDP meeting somewhere that I don't know about. Yeah. So it's, it's easy. And people, uh, I know people who were against UDP in 2021. 
but because of the maladministration, the rampant corruption, the lack of opportunities for youth, lack of job for youth because of these deportations and the myriad other problems that are happening, ministers stealing our money and the president behaving as if nothing is happening, the stadium project failing and the youths cannot work their national team, and a million other issues. Some of those people who were against UDP in 2021, they are coming to me, Sabali, we are sorry, we made a mistake, we are voting for you. Because of my disarrest, a couple of young people came. Bro, you vote in 2021. The why are coming. We are coming. I'm not making this up. And these are from uh, population segments that you don't even expect. But let me tell you, Fatumi, I'm cool with all young youths of this country. Yeah. There are certain youths I don't talk to them about politics. Mm -hmm. They know it. MC Chan, before he took the decision to come to UDP, I never asked him to come. Yeah. And there are many people like that. I hang out with them. But now you have these shoes who are coming to me, Sabali, I need my ID card, a membership card. I want to join the UDP. So all of these things are happening. And my biggest supporter in this country is President Barrow. He's making my job so easy for me by the malfunctioning of his government. Every day, new disaster. Every day, new scandal. So people are even leaving NPP coming to UDP. And for today, it's a level my, of my activities. I will not go into the details. Tell us. Give us a My non-political activities are my biggest assets in bringing people to UDP. I will not give the details. Wow. My opponents are watching. They don't have ideas. All they do is come and what you see what UDP is doing and go and copy it or stop us. We learned a few lessons. See you in 2026. State House. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep this video. I'll keep this video. I'll definitely keep this video. Yeah. Uh, finally, to uh, the hundreds and thousands of supporters of Mamoudou mm Saaboli -hmm. who are worried, are concerned. Um, I know you, mm -hmm. you are on bail. Mm -hmm. uh, you're supposed to go back to court. We don't know whether you will go to court, but you have been charged. So there should be a court proceedings, right? Mm -hmm. To those people who are really worried and, you know, what would you say to them? Well, first, I want to thank them for, for their support and trust and confidence in mm -hmm. me, really, Fatu, because if a whole government is coming up with trumped up charges against you all the time, and I know the government targeting me, making me their number one target, it's not only about trying to get me in jail, because this government knows that I'm right law-abiding. They are lawyers and police. They you know what I said before you yes. go? You know what I said? Yes. Actually, two days before that was uh, Yankuba Dabola. <laughs> court, court. Double court. Yeah. I call MC Cham. Mm -hmm. I go, yo, mm -hmm. yo, <laughs> MC Cham. Sa boss, sa uh, <laughs> young, eh, Tali Ben Suda. Ak Sabali, you know, a topic. Don't let them see Ben protest. They get rag. I said this. And I didn't know. Man, I go, how many of you do them? Sa boss, Tali do them. Sabali do them. Yen, they get rag. Yen. They get wah. Bin the wah jurei. Why? Protest. And I said this to MC. So, and I, at the following day, when I MC, and I said, boss, them now. Mune ma, no, demu de. Yo, demu lo, Sabali demu. Mune ma, hang on yun. Then you have dunga. So in them, eh, I'm looking here. So most of you need them, but you don't go to, you don't even go to protest. Like to be honest, I don't like the idea of protest, and for one main reason, once you bring people out and you mobilize them, you lose control. Mm -hmm. And in a mafia system, yeah, even state security can uh, mask themselves and come to pretend to be supporters of your party or your movement mm -hmm. to create trouble and to implicate your, your movement's leaders. Yeah. So generally, that's why I don't like it. Mm. But uh, the Young's case in particular, yeah. some people ask me to go. I say, I'm not going. Fadu, mm. I have an electric effect on any crowd, by the grace of Allah, mashallah. If I move into a crowd, it's, it's, it gets e excited. And yeah. I know having a youthful crowd next to paramilitary, if I get in there, there'll be a problem. So all of this is try to avoid trouble between my party and the state authorities. I mean, I wish I could say all of the steps I took to try to avoid an incident between the paramilitary and UDP supporters at Young's Court. But I know the situation of the country, and I know my party is at pole position on cruise control to the presidency in 2026. It is not in the interest of us as opposition for there to be violence and chaos in this country. It may not be the interest of the state as well, but when it happens, the state just brings out their forces and uses it to oppress the people and to limit people's freedoms. Mm -hmm. So as a responsible opposition member, as part of a leadership of a party that's led by a constitutional lawyer who's standing instruction, don't break the law, don't get involved in violence. I called the UDP national uh, youth president during that week when all this uh, noise was coming that we... I said, you know the party leader standing instruction is a commando. In fact, his, his voice is, uh, is echoing in my mind. So I don't do it 
and I don't want it. I don't want any problem in this country. We've gone through an electoral cycle successfully by and large peaceful elections. I don't think it is necessary mm -hmm. for there be any, to be any conflict or drama between NPP or UDP or NPP using the security forces to create chaos by, by pitting them against the UDP. I don't think it's necessary. I don't want it. I am doing everything to make sure it did not happen. But there was a moment during my last detention when I was, they were trying to stain me with the alleged coup, mm -hmm. when the imams came and a particular sister of mine came. Because I was very angry also. And I knew that I had a backing outside that was willing to protest on my, on, on my side. So when they came for the mediation, they said, you know, somebody, we know you, you are with the youth of this country. Mm -hmm. Your party youth and those who want to protest on your behalf, they are your youth. But this paramilitary too, they are your youths. They may be taking command from the police authorities and they don't have a choice. But I said, do you want these protesters to come and face this? But that was a, a light bulb moment for me. It was that moment that I told the mediators, look, this is over. Whatever is going to happen to make sure the protesters do not come and these youth protesters don't come and face this innocent youth paramilitary, I'll make sure it doesn't happen. And since then, I've been very, very careful about that. Wherever there is a crowd of uh, opposition supporters coming into contact with the law enforcement, I try to make sure it's, it's, we avoid it. Because, Fatu, we know we are the most popular party and know, we know we are going to win. So it is not just a responsibility as a, as a citizen, but also as a smart politician. We don't want chaos as an opposition. So back to your question on my supporters, mm -hmm. and I know they are a lot, and they are not just UDP. They are in NPP, they are in PDUIS, they are non-political actors also. Mm -hmm. I want to thank them for their solidarity and support and confidence in me, because what the government is saying, back to it again, is not just to stain me and lock me up, but to do a propaganda to paint me as a violent, unpatriotic, irresponsible person. The government has failed because these people, they love me and they trust me. I got a message from a young man from, from New York, one of the most inspiring messages I ever had. Mm -hmm. He told me, Sabali, we know that you are the number one target of this government. They've done everything to you, from alleged coup involvement to alleged murder to burning you and everything. And uh, we know this is unfair. We know this is tough on you. But he said, Sabali, I'm not sorry for you. Mm. I am not sorry for you. I just take inspiration from your, from, from your patience and your resilience and the fact that what they want to do to silence you, they cannot do it. You inspire me. I am not sorry for you. And I, I think I, I shared it. I shared it on my Facebook page. I mean, I know it's tough, but that's the, that's the spirit I want my supporters. And don't be sorry for me. I'm on a path. Have you ever sat down at any point and think mm -hmm. about all of this mm -hmm. from burning from public office, mm -hmm unable to even be elected, which will be decided by the masses, which I think is wrong. I think you will be one of the most effective lawmakers. I said, Hanada Sabal da Malta, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> you know, and you know, um, to going back and forth uh, to court, not able to even do any work in the country, literally. Has you, have you ever sat down and just have a like thought about all of this and shed tears or just <laughs> get sad or feel sorry for yourself or anything? Have you? No. Really? You know, it, 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 it's very interesting. Uh, I think there's a quote uh, going around attributed to my wife, Jay, where she said, uh, yeah. you think you can break, break this guy. You don't know the source of his inspiration. I think that's true. Far the, the life I'm living is not a life that I planned. I was your straight A student from primary school, you know, high, yeah. school, high school, university. My first job was at the most conservative institution in the country, Central Bank. You don't have to deal with any of them. Yeah. It was a permanent secretary at the Ministry of Finance at the time, one of the smartest Gambians ever, Sirin Cham, who poached me from the Central to bring me as national budget director. It was from there that I became secretary general head of the civil service. I was not even dreaming of that. My career path was different. But Allah does not make mistakes. I went there, was fired, sent to jail. You know, sometimes when God is making somebody, you think he's trying to destroy him. Mm -hmm. Allah knows best. He's the ultimate possessor of all wisdom. Sent to jail back and forth. Look at my, my, my trajectory prior to that. Nobody would ever assume that Muhammad Sabali would go to jail. And in any country of law, 
Mungu Disaba will not go to jail for the, in a billion years because I don't have that intention. No human being is perfect, but I will never ever break any law by intention. Out of jail, I became head of GRCS, head of Observer. You know, from there, I was jailed again in 2016 for broadcasting opposition uh, campaign, campaign content, content in yeah. 2016. Mm -hmm. That same opposition group that won came and made me their number one target, banned me and everything. So um, there's some kind of level of divine wisdom in all of this. I met a, a successful entrepreneur the other day. He said he listened to my last interview on Peter Gomez's uh, Coffee Time. Mm -hmm. He was shocked. Yeah. The kind of things I was saying, he did not expect me to say. But that's because he doesn't know me. Because when it comes to the truth, Mouru Sabari has no friend. Mm -hmm. I see, speak the truth, whether it affects me and my friends positively or negatively. So he told me, look, Sabali, you know, all of these things, it's all on purpose. It's all on design. Mm -hmm. Just continue what you were doing. All I'm asking you, talk to the young people of this country. Give them hope. Inspire them. Guide them. I mean, the, the consolation of philosophy. Boethius, Romans, Marcus Aurelius, Ralph Waldo Emerson. I did a lot of reading to prepare myself for life. And incidentally, I'm a motivational speaker and author. I've yeah. been in this. I've read practically every book worth reading that can inspire and educate a human. Biographies from Albert Einstein to Benjamin Franklin, the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Steve Jobs, you name them. All these great people of modern and ancient times. And I know that what I'm going through is just a normal path of what they all go. Who is Muhammad Sabali? Who is Uncle Mumbedi, a little buddy bunker boy from nowhere. Alala kila, alala, ala anabiyo mwol, wol batata. Yeah. Ala mokendo, ala masake woli esor. And you mwale mwuru sabaliti. Kwe mwana nse batata doma ndine. Wala nakabili mwodo ul nata njive bunja woto. Kwebe kumbola nkwe dukare. Jamuke ulo lete. Kwe waka dao doma lete. Malafi sama telo nito li kulu kombo la min. Nabe duna juju wako nakafole nata re sara kajumbe mwa nata le bala fabolo. Ka buso take tilimbali ya. Kewulo, mandinka aru yon tol kulu walon tol te kumbola nte pisalo nte mula koma. Insha Allah bi idnilla. Ate ba ilamu ko. Mnyanta futala dambe futala jele na biata ala. Insha Allah. Insha Allah. And thank you very much, and thank you for being an inspiration to a lot of us, especially people from our area. Thank you. Ngamu ina broda ate wo ngamra. Yuma. Zero four song. Bayo song. Ate mi make P I U. Muna. Bayo mi make. Bayo. 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 Bayo mi make P I U. Na ba ya yes. ronde fango iman detain dula killing bar ni mul na tante ya ni story ka fo yoko nalta rafa ente ka ye sabari ka wi ka man son domorola ni ko yoko duka rafa ya commando fango be domorola ya lo mayor talib came there to see me with tombong sedi yeah and we are talking i said so talib was supposed to go and see him i said talib please can you tell my brother pull man bul worry bul them so i later had a conversation with talib he said he said bayo sabari mo muge leka de juicy ange duka dige na nga banya leka Another person came. I said, you know what? Buy him shawarma. I think he will like that. <laughs> no. I think he, he was a bit uh, reactionary. And you can understand why. I yeah. mean, it's injustice. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts. And you know Bio. He will, you, you know he's, he has a good heart. Very good Bio, heart. Bio is not a violent yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he just expresses his emotions, emotions. as he sees fit. And yeah. it's really, yeah. you know, our experiences are different. Mm -hmm. I never knew President Barrow from Adam. I mean, I never participated in this trouble to change. Yeah. But Bayo was right there. So he was right there. Uh, we still appeal to him to be calm, and I think he's listening. He's listening. Yeah, I think he's, 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 a, he's a nice guy. He's so listening, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy, and, you know, I was very concerned. Yeah. But, you know, thank Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Mulvin Bejubela, final message to the general population. We have over 2,000 people watching right now. Um, I think a lot of them are inspired. 2,000 people just intimidating. Yes, I, I have. Some of them are Kianka. A lot of Kiankas are there. A lot of Kiankas, a lot of... Uh, let me no. see. Can, let me see the Kiankas. Kiankas and Badibunkas. Can you text no. if you are from Kiankas? I'm stars. looking at let the... Let them send stars first before they identify them. The Kiankas, let them send stars. Okay, Kiankas, I'll stars send. I'll stars send. This one has already done for the whole of Badibu. No, no, no. That is not enough for all of Badibu. Stars, Jeluman for 500. More Woman. People, more people will send. Well, Badibunko, <laughs> but let's, let's see this Kiankas. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Is there any Sarahulu sending stars? You will not see it in a billion years. Sarahulu? Yeah. Why? They will lose money. They won't spend it. Muna ketela bulo, bulo le jang. Bulo jang rafa kambira. Ah. Wow. Final message, Sabs. Okay, but I, I just want to say, mm -hmm. what should I speak? English or Mandarin? Anyone. Did you say ala maiko tatale? 
Okay, let me give him this mic to, to say. Sign, 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 just sign, sign. Let me give him this mic. No, can I can't have one there. Then here I use the nipple for the other one. Just hold. Okay, you can call it. Okay. I'll make it fix that. How do you fix it? I fix it. Sorry, guys. You know, sorry. Just say, come. Put the camera. Yes, what do you want to do? Yes. Sorry guys, now my damn so bad. Sorry, what happened? Okay. Alright, go ahead. Go ahead. So I have to Yeah. I think yeah. Okay, like what hold on, hold on, hold on. Muna Dema? Okay, go ahead. What I wanna say in conclusion is that this is the Gambia. It's our country. Yeah. We are all Gambians. Mm-hmm. Whether you're opposition yeah. or in government, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Okay. We have a common good, and the, that's the peace mm -hmm. and hope for progress yeah. for the country. Government's common good, the country stays. Mm -hmm. I mean, the example is not far away. Adam Abaro re replaced somebody, and Adam Abaro came with a message. There are things that Baro hated mm -hmm. and the team in the previous government. Uh, the, I mean, uh, President of Amaka Memphole, what he said, Mintumal and Sukuta from Manyo Sudi. Amaro, you are late. Amaro, me and my man Baxo, we have a problem. We'll you, are, you, are, you are tomboying no, I, Baxo? I, no, I think we have to go to UN Security Baxo, Council. Baxo, Baxo, I have to wear a green. For mm. I don't tell you, I'm green, I'm from Baxo, I interview you. Baxo will not interview you. He will not grant you an interview. <laughs> so what I was saying, yeah. uh, Barrow and his team mm -hmm. cannot hate uh, abuse of process. Mm -hmm corruption, yeah. oppression yesterday, mm -hmm. and then want to institutionalize it today, that yeah. doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. We are opposition. We do not hate the government. Personally, yeah. I don't hate Adam Abaro, and I know that His Excellency Elijah Hussein Odabo does not hate Adam Abaro. Mm -hmm. So they're in government. They have a way of uh, running the government. We think there's a better way to do it. I don't think that should bring in hatred and unnecessary animosity. We are in opposition. Some of us had an option to mm -hmm. join the government or go to opposition. Yeah. We decided to be in opposition. Let them respect our decision. Mm -hmm. There are laws in the country and no human being is perfect. If we go against the law or break the law, come for us. Mm -hmm. But don't try to use abuse of process like the fact that you, the law allows you to call me mm -hmm. Friday evening and keep me in a cell up to uh, Monday, mm -hmm. do not abuse the process because yeah. we know the law is on us. Don't do it. It's not good for me, but it's not good for you either because you are looking for public civility, you are looking for support. The incident that uh, orchestrated all the drama that we are in right now, two young Gambians dying. Yeah. The person who did it, we are still trying to establish the facts of it. There is no sane Gambian who will be happy about that. No. And Gambians did show their maturity and decency in coming together, regardless of ethnicity or political affiliation, to condemn is this act and to show solidarity with the police. The police are not our enemies, and we know it, even those in, our, in, 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 in opposition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's try to control the rogue elements amongst all of us so that there is peace in this country. I don't think IGP Sanya, much as I criticize him, mm -hmm. and disagree with him, is not I don't think IGP Sanya, much as I criticize him and disagree with him, I don't think his desire is to see the police clashing with the opposition. But there are trigger events that happen, rogue elements that you know, please control them, talk to them. If it means firing them, fire them. Because I know there are incidents in UDP mm -hmm. where people threaten violence, and my party leader came and said they, those people should be arrested. Mm -hmm. So if His, if, if, if his Excellency Usain Odabo can show that leadership, I think Doshin Power should do even better. Uh, I think we should all focus on the victims of this uh, tragic incident and their yeah. families. The police have made mistakes. Individuals have made mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think the police should lead this process. I think President Barrow should restrain his spokesperson and his, uh, some of his politicians to allow the police to do their job because they have the sympathy of the media and the entire country so that we all cooperate to make sure this uh, debacle, this uh, whatever it is, is resolved according to law and justice is served. I think that's in our collective interest. For those of us in the political sphere, mm. politics continues. Yeah. I have lovers, friends, and admirers, and, 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 and relatives in NPP, mm -hmm. in, in APRC. 
Yeah. You know, you just mentioned my man, Bakso. Bakso, Even yes. though he was not very happy. <laughs> no, he said he's not happy that I went to you. He says the way I did it, uh, that is what was wrong. Was but Bakso is still my friend. And you know, occasionally, sometimes the rhetoric gets tough. Yeah. But Bakso is still a brother. Okay. You know, Fafa, the first time I met him here at the Bantaba, very nice you guy. saw the interaction. So, yes. if we can live in peace, mm -hmm. mutual understanding and respect, let us not ignite hatred. Let us not ignite violence. Let us not support chaos in this country. It's a beautiful little country, uh, the oasis of the entire continent. Let's preserve it. Let's preserve it. Jarutko. And preserve it, yeah. we should do. Jarutko. Thank you so much, yeah. Sabali. I uh, want to thank you for always mm -hmm. making it. Uh, you you said you told me I will not do an Ismaila on you. <laughs> yes, yes, Ismaila yes. is still coming, though. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> and thank I, you. I, I wish you good luck. <laughs> I wish you good thank luck. Thank you very much. But the Bunga just said the credit. He said for my brother Mohamed Sabali, Kia Mansa. You see? How, how come you are Kia Mansa? Oh, God, they, they, they hero worship me. They don't take young in in kid old lekan na in swole kam bendung. In la chairman or land 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 design. Land design. I know. I live in New York right now. Uh, thank you very much, Sabale, and to all of you that have been following. We want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my brother Mike Lemon. And Mike all by of you. the Sweden crew. That's my Ver brother. That's my, that's my, that's my, that's my brother right there. Mm. Very supportive of Kirfatu. Yeah. And we, we have these loyal, loyal supporters of Kirfatu. I, I said who, it at the beginning. Yeah. Very interesting and very loyal. We have very interesting <laughs> and loyal followers. Yes. E even Sisla Asin Al Jadama is your, is yes, your that's, loyal that's, fan. That's my son. That's my son, <laughs> yes. And we want to thank all of you. And thank you once again for coming. Yeah. And for all of you watching. Thank you for watching. I don't know how to say bye to 2,000 people, but at this point, I have to... Say bye times 2,000. It does it. Yes. Multiplication. Yes, bye 2,000. Bye times 2,000. Bye times 2,000, yes. right? That's 2,000 uh, buys in one, in one statement. Bye times 2,000. Yeah. Bye times 2,000. Thank you, Seku Ture, for the stars. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, to you all, uh, to the technical team, Sire, um, Charles, and the entire team, Mustafa, the Mustafa Squire, thank you. And of course, uh, we want to say thank you to our sponsors, uh, Swami India. Um, if you are in the diaspora and you are looking to buy uh, comfortable apartments, uh, homes, you know where to go to. Because these days people will always have issues sending money. You don't have to worry about that. They have a mortgage system where you can always put a down payment and pay monthly to, to be able to get your homes and first class standard built houses. So uh, Swami India is definitely the, the, the company to deal with. Uh, it's a company that we recommend to you. The airport residence is few minutes to the airport. They have the duplex and all the horizons and other uh, apartments they, that they have right now. So if you are looking for a property to invest in, especially as apartments, uh, call them. The numbers are scrolling right now. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you all. And of course, I want to thank Auntie Ida for the beautiful buy. Oh, Auntie Ida is my star. Auntie, uh, yes. Hi, Auntie Ida. Auntie Ida Co Commando from, from salutes her. you. And I did my own makeup today. And I suited oh, for the hair. Thank wow. you so much. <laughs> Good night to you all. See you all next right. week uh, with another guest. See you. Bye-bye. announce the launch of our new logo. We have evolved since our incorporation in 1997 and it is time to refresh our new look to reflect who we are today. Before I reveal our new look, however, walk with me while I take you through our journey of the last 25 years. Trust Bank was incorporated on July 3rd, 1997 and began operations on October 1st, 1997. Following the collapse of the parent company of its predecessor, Meridian, the CBG stepped in and recapitalized the bank and held the shares in trust, thus the name Trust Bank. In 1999, the first investors who responded to the IPO and paid $1.50 per share received their maiden dividend of 50 bututs per share. In 2000, 
the bank fully paid back its investment by declaring another dividend of $1.20 per share, making it a cumulative dividend per share of $1.70 which was 20 batuts above the purchase price. Between 2002 to date, share capital has increased from $27 million to $200 million, indicating that the bank has grown organically by plowing back profits to increase capital, while at the same time paying dividends to shareholders. The bank was listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange in November 2002, being the first ever cross-border listing in the sub-region. Now let's talk about awards. The bank was awarded the insignia of the National Order of the Republic of the Gambia, ORG, in the year 2010 by His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia. During the past years, the bank has received so many national and international awards. Banker Magazine, six times. Global Finance, six times. Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, five times. We began operations with three branches. Now, we have 18 branches and 20 ATMs and counting. On digital services, mobile app, Check. Online banking? Check. Transaction alerts? Check. Watch this space. We've got more coming. Creating employment? Yes, we've got that too. 400 and counting. And we take great care of our people too. Medical insurance, life insurance, private and state pension. Yiruwa men kafuta na tarambulo luto nga GIA Cargo Complex Parendile puruka julaya sone yandi kadungoni mfunti bunda na doko sembentu ya Banjul International Airport oto mensi nyafa si moluma melika fengo luki bantala banko lukang anin julandingo lufana faisi sula na kago doko lale bang katu masingo lube mbulule ikafome ye forklifts melika selendiro ni jindiro ke baka asolula melbe funti kang waranto kadunan na warehouse lukono nga dinkira sumayari ngo lufana sotole ifula mela fano mu metari kemeleti karo bela adung isi kago baka asolu tano Mensita for ton town war. Ila sumaya fana futata tembeleto. Menka fendolu mabono fo ikana atinya. Fo sene fengolu lombang. Domori fengolu. Waranto jata kendea ni mbori ma fengolu. Kago bagasolu la taradula kendo. Asulata jama ni labang korosiri langolu lela. Na double view x-ray korosiri la masingolu. Aka kago bagaso kono kono jubele. Komi kago doko sartolu ya landi nyameng. Nyin double view x-ray. Amu jama ni labang rapid scan leti. Menka karafula korosiro keno kago sifa bela. Wati kilungo kono. Na doku lalu imu ayata karandingo leti. Mili yela doku wa no ifara mansata kago doku wa na tamandiri nyato na doku wa la bete ya Wey mfutandi RA3 makamoleto mensa atina fo nse kago wa bagaso lukinole kata UK and in EU banko lukang GIA ka hakili tenkungo dila na doku wa to ite njina la menu Every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. 
to make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily.